Good afternoon and welcome to the Reporter Sports Show. We're at Rain Away in this week, home of Ashton Cricket Club, where the first team are preparing for a debut season in the Greater Manchester Cricket League. We'll also be discussing the fortunes of Hyde United and Staley Bridge Celtic, and we'll have action from the Indoor Sports Athletics competition. <laughs> So ahead of the new season here at Ashton Cricket Club, the club has installed a new three-way netting facility and that's set to be complemented with a new artificial strip on the square. The club also announced this week that it's received a significant grant to upgrade the clubhouse, which has been standing for more than 50 years. So Mark, it's looking good here at Rain Away and cricket season's nearly upon us. Yeah, it soon comes around quickly, doesn't it? It doesn't seem like two minutes ago since we were at Denton Cricket Club in the sunshine. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully those days will return. It's a bit cold today, isn't it? Yeah. But looking at Ashton's fixtures, uh, they start the GMCL campaign with a home game against South West Manchester on April 21st. And the first, second and third teams have all been handed home ties uh, in cup competition. So the first 11 will face Old Pennine League opposition in short on the 20th of May, while the second 11 welcome Edgeworth to Rainer Lane for an early first round game on April 29th. And uh, all the fixtures have been uploaded to the TamesHighReporter.com. Well, let's move from cricket to football now, where the big news this week comes from Oldham. Oldham Athletic have now been taken over by Moroccan businessman Abdella Lemsigam. The club announced at a press conference on Friday. Mike was there. Let's see what he had to say. It's a really good challenge for me because I did that for 13 years and now I'm looking for a new challenge and this I get love in this club, I don't know, since the first day that I came in here and I, I am happy to be here and uh, it's, I think this is, I can do something good, I hope, for the future and to be like a president for a club. This is always was my dream, yeah, to be like president for a club and now the dream is coming true. I am not a billionaire or something. I'm just coming step step by step, and uh, like we said, this is I'm coming to work hard for the club and with the coach, with everyone here, and we started just step by step with the club there. We're not like coming like to come into extreme to put in a lot of money just to come in addition money here left or right. We come in here to do good work for the future. Why? Why old athletic? What, tell us a bit about the relationship and how it happened with yourself and uh, Mr. Connie. It's like uh, Mr. Connie is coming there to Dubai to visit me first time, and we're getting well together. We're talking about the Dubai in the club, and they come in here to visit it before I give any okay or something. I come in myself here. I see the potential in this club. When I come in here, I see a few game and everything, and I will tell him I am happy to take over and how we can do it. And it took a little bit of time, but in the end, here we are. So, we, after months of speculation, this news must come as a relief to supporters of Oldham. I'd certainly say so. I mean, it's about time, isn't it? You know, Oldham have desperately needed this. They've been on a dreadful run for sort of the past, what is it now, six weeks maybe? Mm. You know, they've got a few new signings in. They've got that, they've got that safety now. They've not paid players, have mm. they, for the past yeah. few months? So, hopefully, we can get them back on a stable footing and sort of escape relegation because that's what it is now. Well, the Latics have been boosted this week, Mark, with the return of Owen Doyle, but mm. out for how long? Well, it's not all good news, is it? Because he has returned to the club. He scored 14 times in 21 appearances before he left for Preston in January. He returns, but he's not going to play for another six weeks. Uh, he's got a blood clot in his shoulder, so uh, on medical terms, he's said, basically, he can't come and play uh, at this point of the season. 1st of March, I think, is when he's set to return. So, what's that, five weeks? Yeah, about like that? Weeks, it's, it's, a straight, it's a strange one for you, though, because I know it's a romantic signing having him back. Yeah. It was fantastic for Oldham, wasn't it? But surely there were other players out there available that you could have got in mm. that could have made an immediate impact where you need them. Well, talking of that, Richie Wellens is disappointing because they've only brought in two players uh, over the transfer window this week anyway. That's Owen Doyle uh, and a Frenchman. So, he's not happy with that and uh, he's got every right to be. He's basically said that because Owen Doyle can't play until March, they could be down by then. That shows how low in confidence they are. Well, let's move into the team side now, where Steelerbridge Celtic suffered yet another away defeat at Barwell last week. 
back at Balfour though this week can we in a big game against Sutton Caulfield yeah I mean they've got to beat Sutton really haven't they they need the points now Sutton are pretty much the only worst team in the, in the yeah. league aren't they yeah. I mean but they mustn't underestimate Sutton you know they had a great result against Workington I think it was last week I think they beat them 4-1 yeah. is that right yeah. so they're not to be underestimated they could spring a surprise on Celtic well, off the pitch at Bower Fold, as we mentioned last week, Stalebridge Celtic have announced that general manager Michael Beach is set to leave the club to join Barnsley as an assistant club secretary. Mark spoke to him last week and talked about his reasons for leaving. Um, Rob, chairman, met with me towards the end of 2016, about November time, and said, look for someone to come on board and uh, run things. There's a lot of things dropping between the cracks. Um, and so that's what I did. It was my club, so it wasn't, wasn't even any... Uh, thought into taking it, just had to jump into it. And it's been it was a good opportunity for me. It was good experience. It's definitely been an experience. Um, and started in the, started in the January two thousand seventeen. So I've been here just over just over a year. Have you enjoyed the job? Because you have had to overcome some adversity. You've gone through three managers. Uh, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've certainly enjoyed it. It's um, the football side of things. It's beyond my control. I can do. Sign the players, but after that, it is beyond my control. I can just keep us ticking over, um, and deal with the problems that arise, and do deal with the paperwork, and keep us, keep us going off the field. And I think that's what I've done. Perhaps not progressed us as much as I'd like, but that's just to do with the, the troubles that have been on the field. You've definitely increased the social media output at the club. Last season, Twitter, you were barely noticeable. You brought in Matthew Bostock. He's done a brilliant job. Yeah, that's um, perhaps the best thing I've done. I've not, I've not actually done that. I just brought him in. But it's down, it's down to Matt and um, what he's done to increase it. I've just sourced him and met with him to bring him in. I know I've seen it obviously, but um, that was a big part. It's a big part of today's world. Um, so yeah, that's, that is one good achievement, and it uh, helps when it's needed. And you brought some new sponsors on board this season. Were you instrumental in that as well? Um, parts of it, yeah. It's uh, a lot of it. People come to us. Um, it's the whole board. They do work hard. They might take a lot of stick, and rightly so. Sometimes we are where we are, and we have to take a um, responsibility for that. Um, mm. But they do work quite hard to uh, to bring sponsors in, things like that. So of course you were relegated last season from the National League North. As a Celtic fan yourself, you know you've got attachments to the club with yeah. your grand granddad. That must have been quite hard to take. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, no relegation ever been the first one I've ever been through. But the National League was a different beast. It definitely is now, and it was then. Um, we might have the facilities here, but we certainly don't have the budget to compete with any of those teams in that league. Um, and that's just the nature of it. And so it wasn't. It was on the cards for a long time and so he had a, pre a while to prepare um, emotionally for it but it was never easy to go through. Mm. Like I said before you've gone through three sets of managers while you've been in post how did that affect your job? Um, I think it's just got to get on with it um, the board made the decisions on those managers and I have to get on with each one I've got on with um, we've got on with Liam Watson perfectly fine Phil Oanak is perfectly fine Steve Burr work with now whoever was in the post it's my job I've got to remain professional um, and, and do as you're told in aspects of it um, sign the players that the manager wants to sign so you have landed a new job at Championship Club Barnsley yeah. tell us how you're feeling about that um, it would be a rent to leave as I said last week on social media it's, it's my club I'm um, growing up here coming since I was 3 or 4 um, but it has given me the opportunity and this club has given me an opportunity in the career progression path um, to take a job up, such as at, at Barnsley. So what will your day-to-day um, -day role involve at Oakwell? It'll be more paperwork based. I was a secretary here, but was also dealing with um, the facility, um, finance, etc. So it'll be more player-based, um, shadowing the current secretary, Sharon, um, learning from her, because it'll be a slightly different, and it's more exposed. There's FIFA, there's the EFL at Barnsley, so I'll be and shadowing players as well. Uh, dealing with new players that come into the club and helping them assist, uh, adapt to Barnsley life. Well, next Tuesday, Michael will oversee his last home game at the club against Stafford Rangers. But we'll talk about Hyde United now, whose title chances took a bitter blow with a 3-0 defeat at South Shields this weekend. The Tigers did bounce back with a 2-0 win over Kendall Town on Tuesday. But Lee, do you think that's Hyde's title chances over? Or is um, there still a chance? I certainly don't think they're over, but I think what it does is it shows just how strong South Shields are. You know, they're a fantastic outfit this year. And I feel a little bit sorry for Hyde because under any other circumstances, any other year, they'd have probably walked this league at a canter. But South Shields are just so strong and have such mm. a fantastic following. 
the important game now is when South Shields come to you in fields in a few weeks. I think that is a must-win game, and Hyde can't really afford to drop any more points from here on out. I think it was interesting to hear manager Darren Kelly come out after that game and he said, I hold my hands up, we were beaten by the better side, so I guess that is a true reflection of the result. Well, the back in action at Ewan Fields this weekend against Clitheroe, who were just two places below Hyde, but that doesn't tell the full story, does it? Oh, it certainly doesn't. Nine points difference, only two places, though. I think that goes to show just how good Hyde are this season. Is it like and they five also games have in hand as well? Four, I think it's four, four games, games in hand on Clitheroe as well, so you win these games in hand, you know, Hyde will be pushing for a title, but as Lee said then, they were beaten heavily at South Shields last weekend. Maybe that shows the quality they have. Well, in other news this week, Russell Scott Primary School has been celebrating after winning the indoor athletics for the fifth year running. Mark was at the event this week and spoke to head teacher Steve Marsland about the school's success. Horse, tired, thinking he'd lie down. The blood pressure's gone through the roof because it's as competitive as the between schools, uh, coaches and teachers as it is for the children. But at the end of the day, all the children really enjoy themselves and it's just a credit to, to them but to their coaches who put so much time, commitment and effort into uh, making sure that they're well prepared. You know, well organised and, uh, and ready for the event. So just a word on the coaches, Darren Gorman, Rachel Burke, there's quite a number of them. How impressed have you been with them, with the kids this year? We've been, we've been really impressed. Actually the camaraderie and the teamwork has, has shone through. And some of those events they were really, really close. And you saw some of the resilience of the children come through. There's a few laps where, as he swapped over, one, one was last and came up came up on the rails and won that. I'm on about three occasions, which is down to the coaches, never give in, never give in. So how important are these events that they put on uh, in terms of combating obesity? Combating obesity? Um, well, to be honest, it's usually those children that are the best at, whether it be football or cricket or athletics that come to the fore. And I think in terms of obesity, we need to be looking a little bit a little bit deeper than competitive sport. This is for those that are already, you know, middle distance runners or whatever it is, um, and they're excellent already, a lot of these children, but we need to be looking a little bit deeper into encouraging children um, at, what, at the youngest ages we possibly can to get involved in sports and to be active, but to actually have active, healthy lives, which involves parents and bringing the families and communities on board. Because some, some people think it's okay to be, you know, a little overweight, you know, and not, and not joining in some of the competitive sports. Well, to be honest, it's a life choice. And if they make that choice and they make the wrong one when they're young, they, they find it very, very difficult. So I think it's a bit deeper than competitive sport, but we're on the right, we're on the right way. And, the, you know, the government funding certainly helps that. So just while you're here, do we have an update on the artificial pitch that's meant to be going in at the school? Well, um, I met with the engineers today. Um, we're waiting for confirmation from Sport England for their uh, donation towards it, which is about 75 grand. Um, they've removed all the contaminated uh, building waste that was uh, dumped on our, on our pitch by the unfortunate Carillion. Um, but again, that's cost the school. Um, over £100,000 towards towards removing that. But they're well on the way, they've done all the groundwork, they've dug all the uh, the waste out, and now we're ready for, for phase two, which will be, first of all, the extended playgrounds. Then we're, we're hopeful of an artificial floodlit pitch with a grass sports pitch as well to complement uh, the already great facilities at the school. Yeah, I work for a company called Vision for Education. Um, we deal with primarily with supply and recruitment and things for schools but one of the things we do differently is we like to give back to schools as often as we can uh, so one of the ways that we've done that with Tameside is by getting involved in local sport um, so this is the third year that we've, we've sponsored this event um, obviously it's the third year that Russell Scott have won it uh, since we've been involved which is a fantastic achievement it's the fifth year in a row um, so what we're doing is we're donating £200 worth of uh, sports equipment to the school and they make fantastic use of it uh, as well, which is obviously always always great to great to see. Um, this year, we're very very pleased that Godley have also gotten themselves through to uh, the national finals. Again, a huge huge achievement, um, and we're just really proud to be a, even a very small part of it. Really, how impressed have you been with the quality on show today? 
blowing away as again um, this is the third year running I've got a quite a strong background in athletics myself so I've, I've been a coach I've been an athlete uh, so watching watching the kind of caliber of athlete here today is, is just fantastic really um, it's not just about the performance it's also about the team team effort and um, the camaraderie between um, obviously the pupils and the schools and it's very very clear that the schools are very passionate teachers possibly a bit too much <laughs> I think sometimes you have to stop them putting the trainers on and jumping in, but uh, absolutely wonderful to be a part of it, really. Steve Marsland and Ryan Morrison there. So interesting to see Mr Marsland talk about potential artificial pitch at Russell Scott. Yeah, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Especially for the Denton community. Great, we all know how good these netting facilities are here uh, at Rainer Lane Ashton. So to get another artificial uh, pitch down at Russell Scott, be great for the community. Football, brilliant. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. But don't forget for a more in-depth roundup of sports across the borough, you can tune into the Sporting Spotlight on Tameside Radio tonight at 6 o'clock with myself, Lee and Mark.